<laughs> that wraps up first edition for today. Thank you for joining us. There's more news ahead now with Bill and Walter in the newsroom with the 5 o'clock news. Gentlemen. And good evening. The big story at 5 o'clock, the murders of two veteran Chicago policemen. And some new information tonight about the suspect and why he may have opened fire. He was captured this morning after an intense manhunt by more than 100 police officers. A manhunt that lasted more than five hours. Team coverage tonight. John Davis reports on the suspect, 23-year-old Roman Chavez. Dorothy Tucker will tell us about the two officers who were killed. But we begin with Elizabeth Vargas and the night of violence that began with a man and a grudge. He showed no remorse. In fact, 23-year-old Roman Chavez almost seemed smug as police shackled him and led him today to court. I did what I had to do. That's all I say. With those chilling words, Chavez admitted shooting to death two veteran police officers last night. While police say the attack was brutal and unprovoked, Channel 2 News has learned that Chavez has threatened before to kill police officers. He had it in for cops. <laughs> Steve Wozniak is a friend of Chavez's. He said just last week Chavez told him he'd bought two guns and planned on killing several Elmwood Park police officers who'd arrested and incarcerated him recently after repeated traffic violations. He said that he was going to ambush him and wait for him behind the police station and kill him. The cops that were messing with him. That's about all. Uh, Did you take him seriously? No. Everybody on the bus was listening to him. He was going crazy on the bus and I just moved away. Even though uh, Roman Chavez may have pulled the trigger on the gun that killed the policeman, 72-year-old Florence Uniga feels that she's the one who may be responsible because, as John Davis reports, it's her grandson who stands accused of the crimes. I said, well, get that junky old car out of there and don't set it across the sidewalk because the people had to walk out into the street to get past it. Today, Chavez's 72-year-old grandmother emotionally recalled last night's tragedy. Florence Zuniga told Channel 2 News she never dreamed an argument with her grandson over his car would end like this. I said, I got to call the police if you don't get out of here. Oh, why did I ever call him? Why did I ever call him? Why did I ever call him? I've been threatening to call him for a long time, and I never did. And this time I called him. Oh, God, what did I do wrong? Mayor Daly also expressed sadness. And, uh, I think we should all remember that these officers uh, put their life on a limb every day uh, in, in, in the city of Chicago. City officials will also remember the officers by retiring their badges. Dorothy Tucker, Channel 2 News. Out of respect for the slain officers, the police department has postponed tonight's police recognition ceremony. The ceremony will be rescheduled at a later date. It was a busy news day in Chicago. There's a lot more ahead on our news here at 5 o'clock. A new plan by the state of Illinois to help you save for retirement. One story. And dozens of Chicago cab drivers find out there is no such thing as a free lunch. And up next, a surprise development in Mayor Daley's plans to appoint new members of the Chicago School Board. She's got a hot new tour and a strange new look, but can you picture Madonna in high school? Well, you'll get your chance on the next entertainment tonight, because we've got an unauthorized and very revealing look at what Madonna was like in the early days. Madonna was kind of a practical joker. She was a fine actress. Everybody noticed Madonna. Listen to the people who knew her best before she went on to carefully cultivate her own image. It's the Madonna you never knew, only on the next entertainment tonight. Tonight at 6.30, only on Channel 2. Catch all the excitement of NBA basketball this weekend on Channel 2. Your local Ford dealer, quality people, quality products, is a participating advertiser. Anything with wheels, a wheel of on to benefit the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago, will be held on May 20th. To participate, call 793-2094. Here's a piece of advice you may have heard from your parents or friends telling you it's never too early to plan for retirement. And now, as financial analyst Terry Savage reports, the state of Illinois is offering some bonds that could help you make the most of your golden years. Two years ago, when the state of Illinois pioneered the use of tax-free zero-coupon bonds for college savings, people waited in line to get them. Now, there's a new tax-free bond being offered to plan for retirement, and this time the orders will be taken by phone. It's a $75 million offering of state of Illinois bonds, designed for people planning to retire. We'll be looking again at Harry Volkman. Tell us when the uh, weather can take a turn for the better. And also, 
the motorist whose car killed three little teenagers in Riverside, loses his license. I'm Mark Schaefer, downtown of the Anti-Cruelty Society. So we live in a dog-eat-dog -dog world, but did you know that any time you want, you can hug a puppy on your lunch hour? No obligation either. Later, in the 5 o'clock news. Yeah, yeah. Con Man, Bunko Artist, Flim Flam Man. The names change, but the game's the same. Cheating you out of hard-earned cash. Any way that the human mind can devise to make money, the human mind can devise a way to steal money. Tonight, Channel 2's John Drummond takes on some of the city's hottest con games. You'll hear from victims who've been built out of big bucks. And to learn what to look for so you don't get fleeced. It's all part of John Drummond's Cons, Crimes, and Capers. Tonight, on the 10 o'clock news. Bad today? What, worse tomorrow? Worse tomorrow. If you don't like rain, the ducks oh. may like it, but uh, the pumps will be getting a lot of overworking. Uh, uh, watch out. Get your sandbags because another inch to inch and a half of rain could occur in the next 48 hours. We have a new radar to show you tonight. New wide range. Better looking. Here are the temperatures around the Chicago area. It's warming up now. O'Hare is 65. It still is rising up there. That should be a high of 65 there for today. Low 47. And we have it up to 67 in Gary now. The lagging one is midway with 64. Humidity 78, breeze south 18, and the pressure is now starting to fall a little bit at 29.94. Looking first at the setup for our present rain situation. You've got warm high pressure off the east coast, pumping in the air over this front. Too much rain down there still. And we are just east of the cold front, so this is the channel through which the heavy rains will move between now and Wednesday night. The front here is very slow because of an upper southwest wind flow. It has very little force against it. As it moves on to the east, the uh, humidity will increase. And on our weather wonders, we'll talk to you about the comfort feeling here. Stopping the uh, movement on the chart. Now let's move into the satellite and get that to shaking around. As you see the clouds rolling in from the Middle West and down into the south. The bull season is not over. They now lead the 76ers 3-1 after a 111-101 victory yesterday. And of course, we've got some videotape, a little uh, rehash, you might say. Michael Jordan, of course, scored 45 points and uh, as the 76ers Michael tired down Jordan. the stretch, and Jordan did the job. But the story was the bench. Guys like Ed Neely came off there to outplay a, a tired Charles Barkley, who scored some key points. And Stacey King scored 21 points. Nice feed from Jordan here. As the Bulls won this game handily, they now have the 76ers on the ropes and uh, the bench did it, right? The whole key was that the guys come in off the bench stepping up playing because our bench has been uh, criticized all year long for being so young and, and not being productive. But as the, as the season went along, we're getting stronger and stronger and knowing what the meaning of a playoff game is now. We have to step up and play. And our bench has been somewhat the key in this uh, series. Okay, and let me tell you that the Bears settled with the IRS on their tax situation, so they say everything is hunky-dory. Now let me tell you that I've got Pat Day here, and he was red hot today. He's always red hot. You had five winners. We're going to run one of your winners in the uh, seventh race. Scorpio, what was the name of the horse? Scorp Scorpion Sting. Scor Scorpion Sting. We'll run that videotape, but Pat... You're back at Arlington. We're happy to have you here, and the track's in, in great condition, isn't it? Yes, it is. I don't know what they've done to it since last year, but this track uh, handles, handles water tremendously. Uh, we've had some torrential downpours out here. And, uh, that's it from Arlington International Race Course. Back to you, Bill and Walter, because I know you've got a lot to get on yet. We do, John. We do. Thanks very much. Okay. Uh, there used to be a time when the two-martini lunch was the preferred cure for office stress. Well, when we come back, we'll take a look at a healthier alternative, but one that still leaves folks feeling warm all over. Of course, they won't mind if you decide to plunk down $45 and adopt a pet, but the lunch hour puppy hug comes with no strings attached. Unless, of course, you count heart strings. Mark Schaefer, Channel 2 News. Great, great yeah. idea. <laughs> really. They're going to sell or give yeah. away a lot of dogs, a <laughs> lot of animals there. Good night. See you at 10. <laughs>
5 o'clock news is a presentation of Channel 2, Chicago's station for news.